guys. So if you've been on my channel for a while, you know what a big deal food, dog food is to me personally and um, why I've sort of done a lot of research into nutrition and how I can benefit my own dogs with just making myself more knowledgeable. I wanted to sort of do a few extra videos um, exposing, I suppose is the word, the companies that are raking in big bucks but selling utter shite. <laughs> and the, the big one that comes to my mind is Baker's. Um, <clears throat> any dog trainer that hears that a, um, a problem dog is on Baker's will immediately tell you to get your dog off Baker's. Normally I have the product to show you, but honestly I couldn't bring myself to actually spend my own money on something that I really don't want to spend money on and ultimately fund their multi-million dollar machine. So I will show you photos, I will show you website, I will show you exactly what they are selling from their website that you can see exactly what's going on. Let's start with the puppy foods. So from the description, you can see that there's a 100% complete puppy food. Suitable for puppies from six weeks to 24 months. For starters, you don't wanna feed your puppy up to 24 months. That is two years. Your puppy is considered an adult at 18 months. And you should be considering putting your dog on adult food at least a year. Puppy and adult dogs require different nutritional ingredients in order for them to keep growing and grow healthy. If you're still feeding a two-year-old dog puppy food, it will have behavioural issues, it will also have health issues. So you do not want to be following this advice. The recipe I chose was the superfood recipe. Now, unlike my recipe that you can buy from my website, their recipe contains two known superfoods. Uh, it makes up 1.2% of the total 100% bag of their food. 1.2%. This is pants. Compared to the near 35% superfoods, of which there are five varieties in each of my recipes in my dog food, which differ with each recipe. So for the superfood recipes, we've got uh, Scottish salmon, dill, spinach, fennel, asparagus, and tomato, Angus beef, carrot, green beans, cauliflower, tomato, and courgette, Italian buffalo, uh, basil, blackberry, turmeric, flaxseed, and apple. Um, we've got free range chicken, ginger, pomegranate, kale, artichoke, blueberry, turkey, parsley, with papaya, nettle, zucchini, and pumpkin. Um, grass-fed lamb with mint, pomegranate, mulberry, broccoli and fennel and then country duck with parsnip, beetroot, orange, asparagus and pumpkin. You see all of these superfoods change with each of my recipes. There's a reason they change because all of them give your dog different benefits and obviously they will taste different so it, it, it um, complements the meat and the proteins differently. So why not make it taste as good as it can? Because they use uh, spinach and spirulina. Dogs to actually be receiving the benefits from these two superfoods, they need to be in much higher quantities. This is simply a sales tactic, thinking that you are buying something that's healthy for your dog, when actually they're not actually receiving any benefit from the superfood that they've put within the food. So the next bit of the description says it contains antioxidants. Um, so they do have omega-3 and 6. These are your fish oils. These are good for your dog's coat, joints, etc. Um, vitamins A, D3 and E. And then trace elements of a few other minerals like iron, calcium and the rest of the list there. Again, the levels 
of these are so low, there's no point in them being there. So for a puppy food, this is really quite pitiful. And <laughs> if you are using it, change, please. Puppies require higher calories, higher meat content, higher protein, because they metabolize quicker. They are building muscle, they are always on the move. Everything is developing from brain, eyes, muscles, bones, everything needs all of this nutritional value in order to make a dog healthy. If it's not there, your dog will not grow to be healthy. You will have, hot, um, you will have health problems down the line. Uh, so their last claim is with added protein for healthy growth and muscle development. <laughs> it's a joke. There is 4% total chicken in this recipe, four. The rest is 20% meat and animal derivatives. Now, I will be doing another video that explains the jargon on the back of dog food because it is a minefield and there is a whole lot of stuff that requires Googling, understanding to know what you're buying. In my recipe, there is 65% protein. 65, Baker's has four. Meat and animal derivatives <clears throat> um, by European law is defined as all the fleshy parts of slaughtered, warm-blooded animals, uh, fresh or preserved by an appropriate treatment, and all products and derivatives of the processing of the carcass and or parts of the carcass of warm-blooded land animals. So it's very loose. It does not specify what parts, from where, from what, <coughs> or yeah, or, or even what animals are allowed to be used within this. Uh, so you may be buying a chicken flavored dog food, but you could be getting beef or lamb, depending on what is cheaper at the time. Um, also the parts of the animal, you could be getting feathers, beaks, heads, tails, hooves, intestines, you name it. If it's cheap, it will be thrown into the animal and derivatives part of the food and then boiled down at extreme temperatures to the point where there's actually no, <laughs> there's no point in it being there anyway. And this is how they can keep their food so cheap. Now, looking on their website, um, their smaller bags are around £3.20 and they go up from that. I get it, times are tough at the moment, so seeing this food on the shelf in pretty much every superstore, pet shop, anywhere, this food seems like a bargain and with their great sales tactics, bright colours, superfoods on the front, it looks like a bargain buy, but it really isn't. And you're putting your dog at risk from health issues if they continue to eat it. And unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop there. What do I say is the worst ingredient you can have first on the list? <laughs> Grain. And the puppy food has 47% grain. Nearly half of this food is made up of utter rubbish, which has no benefit to the dog whatsoever. They have no nutritional gain from cereals at all. And all it does is get pooped out pretty much immediately. And it's just a way that Food companies like Bakers can make their food as cheap as possible. So that was just the puppy food. We're going to move on to the adult and see if that is um, any better. Remembering that adult requires less calories. So this time I went for the meaty meats um, version. The adult dog is apparently beef flavoured with vegetables. So first 
as we go straight into the ingredients that we have 48 percent cereals that's even higher than the puppy food we then have four percent beef just four and then 20 percent meat and animal derivatives so unknown origin or protein type so say your dog has a chicken allergy and you specifically picked beef to stay away from chicken but you've got um, meat and animal derivatives so there could be chicken in there anyway um, and there's absolutely no mention of vegetables on the ingredients list they have it on the front of the packet but it's not in the ingredients list nowhere <laughs> it's an utter joke they have put it on the front of the packet and not in the food. The only thing they do mention is vegetable protein extracts. So what is a vegetable protein extract? <laughs> um, it is another term that doesn't shed any real light on what is in the food. It gives no indication of which vegetables are used, nor does it say how the protein is extracted. Although most common methods involve chemical reactions that are far from what most people would regard as natural. For dogs, vegetable proteins are nutritionally inferior to those found in meat. Common sources of vegetable protein include soya, maize and wheat, which have all been linked to dietary intolerance in, and in our opinion should be avoid, avoided for dogs with sensitive, for dogs with sensitivities. So in theory, they could also be using extracts from more grains. Super. Um, some nutritionists have also speculated that vegetable protein extracts might also be a pseudonym for MSG, uh, monosodium glutamate, uh, the con controversial food additive that some believe is mildly addictive. So not only are they not providing your dog with vegetables, fresh ones, dried ones, they're not providing your dog with anything that you would, you and I would know as a vegetable. Um, they are potentially adding more cereals to the food, which is already at 40, no, hang on, which is already at 48%. Um, they could also be masking it as a chemical which allows your dog to be addicted to the food. <laughs> Just how is this allowed? How? <clears throat> and not only that, this is one of the biggest companies raking in the biggest amounts of money year on year, which means people out there are buying this rubbish, buying it day in, day out to fund this company. In my recipes, you can clearly see all the veg added into the recipe. There's no extracts, just veg, and it's all fresh. And it's all on the back. It's all labelled. I will show you on the website because it's easier to see. <sighs> okay, that's what I'm going to um, I'm going to do a senior dog recipe before I blow my braids out. <clears throat> and um, most, if not all, senior dog foods should have joint aids in them. And they should be lower fat. So, um, oh, to make sure they don't uh, gain any weight. Um, my senior dog food has joint aids in them. They also have a special protein in them, which eats up fat basically um, so your dog can have the full amount um, that you'd expect to be giving them but they won't gain weight on top of that so it says it is specially formulated to help maintain vitality in the older dog it is lower in fat to prevent weight gain and it uses superfoods <laughs> I don't even really want to say this out loud. 52% cereals. So this has gone up again. 
this is over half of your dog food is now rubbish, which they will just poop straight out. There's, there's no point. 4% um, is chicken, 20% is meat and animal derivatives, um, which is the same formula as all the other dog foods. 1.2% uh, superfoods in the entire recipe, and there's absolutely no joint supplements, none whatsoever. As your dog ages, um, their repair and regeneration of the cartilage between joint lessens um, to a point where it will just stop altogether. And they can develop diseases like arthritis, hip and, dis um, hip and shoulder dysplasia, spondylosis, which is a condition of the spine making it become more rigid, less flexible, and can also then sort of have an effect on the spinal cord itself. Um, older dogs need joint support. Um, when I say older dogs, you're sort of looking at six plus. Um, and they get this by taking supplements um, to aid them and reduce aches and pains that come with getting older. Um, this, this is, in my personal opinion, a must for all senior dog foods. All senior dogs need this help. The front of the bag reads country vegetables. There is a total of 0 0.6 vegetables within this recipe, which is dried peas and dried carrots. And <laughs> Is, is barely worth mentioning. It doesn't even make 1% of your entire dog food there. It, what's the point? And just to cover all bases of bakers, um, they do a small break dog food. Um, it's pretty standard to have a small breed dog food, but then you should really have the large breed to go with it. They do not. Um, small breed um, generally has smaller biscuits, which they do, and um, small breed require higher calories because they generally metabolise everything quicker. If you think of a Chihuahua from a Great Dane, their heart rate is going to be beating twice as fast compared to the Great Dane, so they're going to be needing those calories a lot more than the Great Dane will. <clears throat> Um, so, 43% cereals, for some reason that's lower. Then we got 4% beef, 18% meat and animal derivatives. For some reason that standard of um, formula that they've done for the meat has changed. In fact it's lower, it's lower. There's even less protein in that for the smaller dogs. Um, it's 1.2 superfoods, um, again the spinach and the spir spirulina. 0.6 vegetables, carrot and peas again. Um, so it's pretty similar to the other recipes. They don't really seem to vary it at all. Um, and it should be varied quite a bit depending on the size of the dog, age of the dog and weight of the dog. So honestly, um, gobsmacked. I'm. I, I am. For, if I didn't have a script in front of me, I'm honestly quite lost for words that this is actually allowed to occur. I wanted to do an exposed video, so this is the first of a few, because this needs to be known. Um, and I've been wanting to do them for a while, but. Jesus. I honestly didn't know what I was going to find when I started sort of deep diving into all these ingredients and looking into bakers and this is this is this is shocking. And um, truthfully, I'm deflated. Bakers made 11.3 million pounds in sales last year alone. It was the second highest retail dog food company second highest the first is going to be my next video uh, 
I will be doing more videos on these because as much as it pains me to actually talk about them, it needs to be known and you need to know how bad these companies are for your dog. So if you are on Bakers, if your dog is on Bakers, please, please think about changing your dog food. There are better options out there for your dog. You do not have to spend a lot to get better food and it will be healthier for your dog. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button so you don't miss any of these extra videos coming up. <sighs> these exposed videos are about to get rather juicy. Ooh. Anyway, I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.